Who is responsible for this odd-looking tree fort? Maybe a spider? Find out in this episode of Bug of the Week. Welcome to Bug of the Week Part 3, brought to you by Little Dude's Insect Academy, where we dive into a super unique bug each and every week. If you're new here, consider subscribing and dropping a like. It would help out a lot. But without further ado, let's just jump right into this super cool bug. This unassuming moth belongs to the genus of Malacosoma. But that's not actually what we're talking about today. We're actually discussing the caterpillar of this moth. The genus of Malacosoma includes 26 species, six of which are native to North America. The caterpillars of this genus are very unique in that they are social, colorful, and diurnal, meaning they are active during the day. As many of you may already know, the larval stage of a moth is called a caterpillar. Most moths and butterflies have something known as a host plant, and before we can move on to discovering the super crazy things about this caterpillar, I need to explain to you what a host plant is. A host plant is a species of plant that a specific moth or butterfly will use as food as a caterpillar, and then will go on to lay its eggs as an adult. The entire life cycle of these insects are dependent on their host plant. Most moths and butterflies have different host plants. For example, the milkweed is the host plant of the famous monarch butterfly. The species of moth within the genus of Malacosoma that we'll be discussing today is known as the Eastern Tent Caterpillar. The host trees of the Eastern Tent Caterpillar are the black cherry, the crab apple, and apple trees. The tent caterpillars hatch in early spring just as their host trees leaves are starting to open up. The most unique trait that these caterpillars have is that they're actually quite social, meaning that they tend to live in large groups together. This caterpillar also possesses the unique ability to spin silk, similar to that of a spider. As a group, these caterpillars construct an intricate silk castle in the canopy of the host tree. An interesting fact about most caterpillars is that they're actually very extremely sensitive to temperature. And so if their body temperature becomes lower than 54 degrees Fahrenheit, they are actually unable to digest food. So that's a big problem if they get too cold. To combat this, the caterpillars actually work as a team to build their nest with numerous basking and shaded areas for proper temperature regulations during the early spring months down into the summer months. As spring comes to a close and the temperatures gradually begin to rise, they begin to hide in the shade more frequently, hiding from the heat. Now, eastern tent caterpillars in particular feed on the sprouting baby leaves of the host tree, meaning they have a small window of feeding time per tree. So for this reason, they first feed on their home host tree. Then as they have eaten all the baby leaves on that tree, they migrate to a new surrounding trees and to then return to their home tree. So they kind of spread out over the day and then come back. As thousands of caterpillars feed on each tree, they produce a lot of frass, which is caterpillar poop. So much, in fact, that the sound of the frass falling to the ground has often been confused with the sound of rainfall. After about seven to eight weeks, the caterpillars are ready to metamorphosize. They find a protected place on the ground or under the eaves of a building to begin spinning their cocoons. About two weeks later, they then emerge as adult moths. They then find a mate and lay their eggs on a host tree. Clutches of eggs are covered in a frothy material known as spumaline, which is hydrophilic and prevents the eggs from drying out. As you can imagine, when there's thousands of caterpillars, in certain areas, tent caterpillars actually go through an extreme boom in population known as an outbreak. In extra prone regions, outbreaks can occur every 10 years or so, or once in a blue moon in all kinds of areas. During these massive outbreaks, millions of caterpillars can be born and can defoliate tens of thousands of acres of forest. These outbreaks can even last one to three years long. So next time you spot one of these silk castles in the trees, know that it isn't a massive spider, but a little caterpillar party in the canopy. If you enjoyed this episode of Bug of the Week, consider subscribing and dropping a like, like I said before, and checking us out on social media and our website. Um, all the links are below in the description of this episode. So with that, I will see you next week, and keep on bugging.